Dragcast, episode 183. We are sitting down today and talking to the... I can't even get it out because I'm so excited. <laughs> Guys, today's Daisy Day. Happy birthday, Daisy Ridley. We have an amazing podcast featuring um, the imitable, the amazing, the incredible, the, the talented Daisy Ridley. I hope you enjoy this fantastic, fantastic podcast. Uh, Patricia and I are both so excited to share it with you. This podcast was recorded on March 20th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to Dragcast with Nina West. I am sitting here like schwitzing. I'm so excited because we are talking to somebody who I'm absolutely in love with. The world took notice when Daisy Ridley came onto our screens in 2015's episode seven, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and we haven't stopped paying attention since. Today, we are fortunate enough to chat and hopefully laugh with, or at least 12 laughs with, one of my very favorite people, Daisy Ridley. From battling Sith Lords to Kenneth Brada's murder on the Orient Express to a dramatic retelling of the love lost Ophelia in Ophelia and beyond, we are really excited to welcome to Dragcast Daisy Ridley. Hi! Hey. That was also a massive ego boost. I'm like, thanks, in these dark times. I'm like, oh, I've done some stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm just lo- I'm literally me and Patricia are sitting here literally losing our minds. We're just are you so- guys together? Yes. yes. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> we're uh, together, uh, six feet apart. We're sp- uh, we're supposed to be under stay at home orders, <laughs> but I felt like it was worth coming for this. Yeah, we had. Are, to- <laughs> are you in New York? We're in Ohio. Oh. Wow. I know. I know. Yeah. I was in New York right before everything had started to shut down and I was yeah. getting nervous myself and I decided to hit it back home, which does lead to our, our really our kind of our first check in, which is how are you in all of this in the midst of this craziness that's going on in the world? How are you? I mean, I'm I'm good. Like there come waves of panic, usually about um, family getting ill. Mm-hmm. It's usually those things. It's like I, I've sort of stopped myself reading the news too much because it at the beginning I was just freaking out and then I'm secreted in the countryside with some pals so it's like it's sort of all good and today is a good day but you know the the panics come yeah but trying to keep it calm but I think everybody has that what are you doing to occupy yourself and your thoughts right now well today I've been a domestic goddess I cleaned out my food (laughs) cupboard (laughs) <laughs> I reorganized my foodstuffs. I made broccoli soup and I made focaccia, which will be ready tomorrow. Oh, delightful. Oh, so, oh. You're a baker. You're a baker. Yes. I mean, it's not, you know, I just had a morning of like, yeah, let's do some stuff. And I did some Wim Hof breathing, which I think is helping. And I've been doing a cold shower every morning. Uh, so I guess that's a sort of meditation. Really? Yeah. That sounds. I, I would never. I would never. A think to do a cold shower, but it's helping. Oh, <gasps> I mean, have you heard of Wim Hof? No. Are you, yeah. Please educate me. Okay, this guy Wim Hof. He's called the Ice Man. He has. He's like the Guinness World Record holder for a number of things. He did a marathon in the desert without any water and kept his temp- body temperature the same. What? He swum in ice for like longer than anyone. He's amazing. So he does this breathing thing um which he says taps into your physiology and like he was injected with a bacteria uh, that was supposed to make him sick for sick for six hours and he got rid of it in 15 minutes he's amazing what yeah so he's all over the internet it's really amazing okay now i'm going to spend the rest of my day reading about him because oh yeah (laughs) after of course we get done talking with you (laughs) um but so, but everything is, it's otherwise you are, you are well, right? You are good. You are. Yeah. You were, what were you doing in the midst, right before kind of the world shut down? What were you doing? Well, the thing is, I've essentially been unemployed since December. So <laughs> I'm essentially doing the same thing now as I was before. So in that way, it's all right. Cause I was already a bit bored, you know, um, <laughs> it's just all the other stuff that's more scary, but I'm, I'm reading a lot, watching films. You know, all the usual sort of stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. So what do you, what's, what's the current book that you have uh, uh, in your hands or uh, in your house right now that you're reading? Well, uh, it, it has come into my possession. I did not buy it. It's a book called Lady in Waiting, which is about 
Princess Margaret's like lovely <laughs> person. And I'd read something really amazing last last week. So I was like, oh, I just picked it up. And it's sort of ridiculous. It's about literally the richest people in England who sort of bought into marry and what have you. And it's uh you know, it's not massively thought provoking, but it's it's a fun read. Which is which is really kind of what you what we all need right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, but I'm also like I feel like I'm also boring myself and I'm so sorry, I feel like I'm probably boring you guys too. Wish no, I had to be more no. Oh to my you. god. Are you kidding? This, like <laughs> so we had asked ahead of time on like our socials for like questions for you. Oh and, yeah. Like, what you're reading is like a big question because people know oh. that so we're gonna we're gonna pepper in some of those listener questions as we go but yeah i i think we just want to talk about you and uh <laughs> and you and, and what you, you're doing and, and really more about you honestly and, so <laughs> well do you know what i actually have been writing down what i've been reading and i've gone to get it because it is i have read some amazing things and i wrote some questions for you oh you my god, god. <laughs> yeah so books. okay good turnabout is fair play then you absolutely are i'm i'm game i'm here for it i'm so here for it can i ask you my questions for you yeah do you want, go ahead let's start there well they're fun disney slash star wars ones oh my god you're gonna yeah. get okay. oh my god oh god so me and my friend richard who you met when we came to your show I, he came up with the first oh my god okay so where do simba and nala say they're going when actually they're going to the elephant graveyard they're going to the watering hole. Duh. Nice. Who originated Sebastian in The Little Mermaid on Broadway? Titus uh, Titus um, Burgess. Nice. What film are these lyrics from? <laughs> what a chance to get a better peep at the plants and creatures of the deep. What a chance to get a better peep. As a, oh, my God. Uh, wait, say that, what film is it from? <laughs> is it the, which, which, which film is it from, yeah. What, what a chance to get a better peep to get a glance. Wait, say that one more time. What a chance to get a better peep at the plants and creatures of the deep. I it involves, know. oh, bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh my oh. God, Angela Lansbury. I should have <laughs> oh, known. No. I know. Oh. So uh, name the animated Disney film that is based on true events. And I was trying to think if any of else are. But an ancient sort of true story. Name an animated Disney film based on true events. Yeah. Pocahontas? Oh, fuck. Yeah, no. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> you said, oh, fuck, no. <laughs> Wait, did you say Mulan? I said Mulan as yeah. well. Yeah, I can yeah. guess. Right. And <laughs> these, are my, these are my two Star Wars questions. Oh, one, God. which I had to Google. Which creatures <laughs> are shown in the original trilogy but are not identified? Only in the closing credits did anyone find out what they were called. Is it the um the uh the uh um it's the uh, the uh, the Jawas? No, but I they say they Jawas. Say that, yeah. Don't they call them Jawas? There are three characters. Is that what you said? What are the creatures? Creatures. Yeah. They they're identified. They're only... identified only in the closing credits, but they are you see them. In the in the first three films, is that we said, yeah, yeah, Ewoks. I know they're only in the yes, films. nice, good job. I didn't know that. Yes, and who has different amounts of digits, uh, depending on which film they're shown in? Fingers, it'd be fingers. Yeah. So I'm gonna job. say a different amount of fingers depending on which film they're shown in. Yeah. Uh, um, Skywalker. No. Well, he Imagine is- if Skywalker suddenly had seven fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is missing an arm. <laughs> that's true. Oh my god, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's true. <laughs> we're cheating. Okay. We're we don't cheating. Know. We don't. Um, is it is it Jabba the Hutt? No, no, it's Yoda. 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 Yeah, he was a puppet. <laughs> oh, yeah, apparently on. he's shown with three in some and four in the other. Well, mm. okay. Well, hold on. Now this is a good lead in then because um, we're only going to talk about Star Wars for just a moment, but mm-hmm. I do. But it is such a major part of film history and this, mm. this legacy that you step into is major. And when you were cast, I know you were aware of it, but you know what JJ Abrams said something to you along the lines of understanding what you were stepping into. And it was more than just a role in a film. It was yeah. part of a religion. Did yeah. you, how has that 
how, I mean, how has this uh, changed your life in that way? Knowing that your the fandom is really fantastic and wonderful and awful. All mm. the time. I mean, it's changed film by film, honestly. Um, if, like 98%, it's so amazing. Um, this last film, was, it was really tricky. Like January was, was not that nice. Uh, it was weird. Like I felt like all of this love that we'd sort of been shown the first time around. I was like, mm. where's the love gone? And it's sort of, I don't know, it's that tricky thing. I watched the documentary of the making of this week and it's so filled with love. And I think it's that tricky thing of when you're part of something that's so filled with love and then people... You know, like everyone's entitled to not like something, but it feel it just I don't know, it feels like it's it's changed slightly, but I think in general that's because social media and what have you. I was just gonna and, ask if you think that's the if the culture has shifted because of something like social media, so they think their opinion, they think that they are in fact way like they're they have creative sway and say. I think it's like I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it's more that I don't know. I, I don't know. I think in general, people share so much on social media mm -hmm. that like if I went to it, well, I don't have social media anyway, but if I went to a film and didn't like it, I just wouldn't tweet about it. But, but it's such a conversation and it always has been again. So it's sort of fine. I guess now conversations are just more public. So there's stuff that I wouldn't have seen, but honestly, like trying to scroll through my newsfeed in January and trying to not see Star Wars stuff, I'd see headlines and be like, oh my God, this is so upsetting. So it's, uh, it, it, it's been tricky, but then it's like, um, you know, having that thing of, I feel really proud of it and I'm so thrilled to be part of it. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's a, it, it's a funny, it's a funny thing. Well, you don't, the, the, that's I think the unfortunate thing is that while you all are, are creating this amazingly beautiful story and and really finishing off a nine film series, mm. you know, I'm putting I'm putting and closing the the book on this right and closing yeah. on these on these characters, you know what the what the world wants and what <laughs> and is never going you're it's never going to make happen. everybody happy. So <laughs> yeah. how so did you ever did that ever come into play? Say so you make the first one. You make yeah. the Force Awakens, and like you said, this a massive, major reception, and mm. and you you continue to go on and fulfill this tremendous, tremendous, amazing character. And mm. did you ever have to adjust? Did you? I mean, is this why you left social media? Because I because that, that is such a big part of the conversation surrounding the 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 the. the uh, the person that is Daisy Ridley, right? Yeah. Like everything. No, that, I think yeah. everybody sort of tried to mold that into something else. It really wasn't mm -hmm. a story. Like I was asked to go on it. And at the time I was like, okay. And then it sort of got to a point where I didn't want to be on it. And I was at my friend's house in LA. And I remember being like, oh, I don't want to be on Instagram. And they were like, well, why don't you come off? And I was like, oh. And it was weirdly like a nice autonomous decision. Because I was like, oh, I actually don't have to be on it. This is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is nice. And I always had like a limit to what I shared anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, like my life isn't that exciting. So, so there, <laughs> there are also like a lot of separate things. So with things like when we came to your show, I was like, Oh, my God, how do I now get in touch with Nina? So it's a really weird thing. It is amazing in those ways, because you there are times that you yeah. want to get in touch with people and what have you. But, um, but here we are. I didn't have social media and I'm on your podcast. So. Well, listen, this is the thing. I said, I, was, I came home and I was like, I, I remember meeting you and I was like, oh, she doesn't have social media. How do I even get in touch with her? Yeah, I was going to get my friend to message you and then I was like, you must be inundated. So, but here we are. Well, you know, and that's the thing. I will tell you this. On a smaller scale, social media has become such a divisive tool mm. on how people rate one another and how mm. people you know, hold up uh, someone's value and their worth. And I know that uh, just by knowing you and being a fan of you, that you have such um, such a strong voice in wanting especially young people to feel their worth and their value and know mm. that they're worth it and know that they're enough. How mm. do you have that conversation in a difficult world where social media and bullying and a people's opinions seem to pervade everything? Well, that's that's the thing too. I just think it's, 
I, I look, I think people do it really, really well. And it's an amazing way for a lot of people to reach other people. But I think maybe as well, the, the position I was in, I just felt like, I don't know. And, and a lot of what, what I sort of believe in is about communication and like less distraction and whatever. So I don't like phones at tables, all of that sort of stuff. And I also think it's that thing of not only, are you, uh, I don't know, it's like, people need to be more connected and I think people think that they're more connected on their phones but I don't Mm -hmm. believe that so it's also a secondary thing of it's a good way to get a message out but then are we all just like looking at our phones and actually talking to each other and and you know letting life slip by while we're scrolling Mm -hmm. um it's a it's a really tricky one to to handle and I know people do it really really well I'm just not Mm -hmm. that person yeah, it feels like there's like a pressure to engage on social media and then mm-hmm. to do it in a certain way where you're painting yourself in a certain light. Um, so, yeah, and I I totally feel that like distraction uh, part, part of it. I feel that in my maybe just for my phone, even without social media, you feel like, oh, mm-hmm. God, I gotta go look at it now because I got a ding. Um, so when you don't have that, uh, what is it like? What has it been like now that you're off social media? Do you feel like you're more connected? Do you feel like you're less distracted? Uh, what is it? What is that like for you? I do. I do feel more connected, but I also it's also that tricky thing of I notice other people being way less connected. So then it's also like yeah. trying not to be like judgmental, really, of that because some like I've seen it. Like I have friends who are obsessed with their phones, and it becomes. Yeah a weird thing where people start living through their, I don't know, it's just such a strange thing. So I think I am more connected and I I would hope that I am. I think my concentration levels are better, like when I'm not on my phone a lot. Um, yeah, I just see good things from it, honestly. But I know, and I imagine you reach so many people in such an amazing way, but also what you have to say is so important. Well, that's, well, but that's, don't, that's what makes me go back to, um, the character of Ray and mm-hmm. what you and what you do and what you stepped into as a symbol for for kids and for mm. young girls and knowing that their strength and their power and allowing them to connect to that do you mm. how do you feel as being a role model and being able to shed like share that message in a very different way that doesn't require an Instagram post or doesn't require um a Facebook uh, status because mm. it will live on forever I mean you're joining the ranks of Carrie Fisher, who, mm. you know what I mean? Like this epic yeah. story that is of powerful women. How do you see Ray as this tremendous role model? Um, I think at the beginning, I was so like, like at the, the thing is when I got it, and it's funny because Berkey, who's one of the producers I was speaking to this week, and we were talking about, we were talking about a film I just watched, I can't remember what we were talking about, with a female character in it who was not a great character. And um and in general people like <laughs> casting so yeah I I, got, I won't say what it is and people uh, in general casting um women in roles and being like oh we're doing the female version of dot 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 and he said you know when they were getting ready to do Force Awakens they weren't like oh let's do this but make it a woman they were like we just want this to be Ray like this is her sort of thing so it didn't feel like an agenda. So playing it I never felt um at the beginning I just thought this is awesome like look at all the stuff I get to do and I never thought about it in terms of me being a woman I was just like I'm just doing my role Mm -hmm. and the thing I've really noticed is it's like you know Adam doesn't get asked how does it feel playing a guy you just you just do it um so at the beginning I was much less aware of it which I think was nice because I was just doing what I thought was you know the performance and then and then And then it's not like I'm um, stepping away from what I did because obviously I played the role. But (laughs) she she is the sum of so many parts. So I also can't say that uh, I I can't take credit for her being a role model because I didn't write her. I didn't dress her. I didn't, you know, all of those things that come from so many different departments that she is greater than the sum of her parts, really. Um, So it's a weird thing of slightly distancing myself from that but also seeing in a in a general way she is an amazing amazing character and I don't think it's because she's a woman she's just an amazing character Mm -hmm. um and I've been able to 
like it's such a privilege to be able to play um god i feel like i'm just waffling have i even answered your question no no because it's it's like that's there because it's a complex question Mm. even when you point out you know i want to apologize because i don't mean it to sound sexist because you're absolutely right no 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 and it doesn't it's just that funny thing of i think you start and especially because obviously all of the interviews we had to do in the run-up yeah. I sort of think, my God, like, how must it feel to be, to never be asked how it feels <laughs> because of your gender or whatever? I'm like, well, well I, read this, I read this yeah. interview that you just recently did where someone was like, what's it like to be directed by a female director? And I was like, that's just a really shitty question like, because she's <laughs> also, that that female director just is also just directing. <laughs> so it's yeah, like- but it is. But again, it is that interesting thing of it's not. I don't judge that because it is so rare. So it obviously makes sense. But I do feel right. like because the third film, I was still being asked similar questions from the first film. And I was like, I feel like things should have changed in five years. Yeah. And I think it was more that like that made me realize that it's still taking such a long time. But I think in general, the rhetoric of how films with female leads are spoken about, like even Harley Quinn, which I saw and loved. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. were going, oh, because it's a female-led film, that's why it hasn't done such and such. And it's like, but the way it's being reported is making it feel like an agenda. So people are being, mm-hmm. like, pushed something onto their laps that they don't want to. It 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 makes everything, I think, take a step back with you. But I'm not saying you asking is, but I think it is that just general funny thing of it will always be how did it feel to be, you know, one of the female roles in Star Wars. No, because it is like you. I can't. Yeah, I, I, I need to be more aware that I'm co- like it is in this ingrained, and it's. I, I apologize because that's no, no, a- no. But again, like you don't. It is just. It is an absolutely valid question. It's um, yeah, and I think again, it's not you because it's the first time you're asking me. I think it's certain people who, for three films, sat down and sort of asked me a similar thing. Yeah. yeah. And- like, how does that feel? Because you like you you've done these three films, three very yeah. different films that really did catapult your career, mm. um, and so three very different films with very different uh, motivation and characterization mm. and storyline. But you're getting these basically the same questions that really don't evolve with the character. That yeah. has to be frustrating. I mean, JJ was really amazing because we did this group interview for. We were in Disneyland in New Souls, land which is amazing. And we were doing this like very strange uh, interview in like a cart, like a roller coaster thing. What would you even call it? Where you sit when you're going to be the ride. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was really talking about like my performance. And I remember at the time thinking, God, he's really nice doing that. But now I think I, he was really trying to like talk about what I did as a performance, not like the other stuff and that is that was good because it sort of takes away everything else and 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 made me just be like yeah I've played the role three times and mm-hmm. I was really proud of what I did last time like I worked before I saw the film uh because it's always weird watching yourself on screen I worked so fucking hard um for like six years so it's again I'm just I don't know where I'm going with this but it no, is really. it's an amazing it's an amazing thing to continue to do something. And when you strip away everything else and just, which I basically tried to to do in January when I was having like this massive wobble, trying to not let what other people's, what other people were saying affect me. I had to just take it all back and be like, okay, I had an amazing time. Yes. I worked really hard. Yes. I got to play an awesome role. Yes. And like take that with me as a memory rather than what other people were saying about it. Well, I, that leads me to wonder <clears throat> and ask the question that I know you've been asked a million times, but maybe um, if you could talk about, I think uh, in these, in the final film, you're playing opposite a Carrie Fisher that was mm. not, not there. And, mm. and th- I think the impact of, I think her life on you and the, mm. Star, the Star Wars saga. And then, you know, what, can you speak to that a little bit? I can't describe how strange it was. I just can't. It's really like in the in the documentary thing, you do see a bit of it. And I think it was obviously really upsetting for everybody. Mm-hmm. It was so strange. And then watching it was so strange. And it, we had like a group um, 
they showed us all together in Bad Robot. And we were sat next to, was Mark there? Anthony was definitely there. I can't remember if Mark came in late. And it, and suddenly it was that weird thing of we kept thinking about sort of how it was for us. And I looked at Anthony and I was like, oh my God, Anthony knew Carrie for so long. Like mm-hmm. Harrison knew Carrie for so long, Mark knew Carrie for so long. So it was a really, really emotional thing and Billy her daughter was so amazing about everything and she's in it and she said you know she got to be in a scene with Carrie um for the last Star Wars film which was amazing it I I can't describe how weird it is and it's also strange because you know in a general sense I didn't know Carrie for very long um I definitely felt like a kinship because of I mean we knew each other to a point we worked together she was amazing um and we were you know two female big female roles in a mm-hmm. in a big universe in a big galaxy mm-hmm. um so then it, so then it sort of became a thing of um relativity so you sort mm-hmm. of had to like step back the emotion that you might have been feeling because there were other people who were so much more part of that but it was also amazing because then when the film came out like you could feel especially in America because I think Americans are louder and more demonstrative <laughs> the love in the cinema was unbelievable and I think people I think that's one thing that people seem to be very happy with that she mm-hmm. got a proper send-off um but it's so strange was it strange overall just to be wrapping up this six years of your life like oh yeah no oh yeah and and January a big part of why I was so like ah it's also because I'd spent the last two months with John, Oscar, JJ, like every day. And then suddenly I was like, where are my friends? <laughs> and we were filming every day. I'd be like, oh my God, this is the first day of the first week of the last film. Oh my God, this is the second day of the first week. So I was basically, and it was a long shoot as well. And there was never a time where I was like, I want this to be done. Like I'm ready for it. I was, I, I was so horribly emotional on the last day. I cried so much. I still don't know what I said in my speech. I just went. Yeah, I read that. I read that. Oh what did, my what, god! You have what? What? You, it's like it was. Was is it like camp ending? And you're just <laughs> wanting to sing a, like a song with everybody because that's what I imagine it would be like. That's the only thing I have to compare it to, honestly. It's. <laughs> it's, it's. I don't. I. It's the strangest thing. I guess it's like leaving school. Yeah. Um, when you've loved everyone, like okay, well, actually loved then. everyone, who's most likely to succeed? Then I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> oh kidding. my god, <laughs> who's most likely to be a prom king? Um, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was so, it's so weird, and it's also that thing of a lot of people that you think, oh, I might see you again on another film set, but yeah, maybe not. And there were everybody was there on the last day. So the studio was full of people. And you think like all these thousands of people, oh my God, it was so emotional. And then John texted me two days ago and was like, I really miss you in Oscar today. I was like, me too, bro. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this rumor. I don't, know if you can, I don't know if you can confirm this, but I heard yeah. that you and your fellow castmates would binge watch RuPaul's Drag Race on set of Star Wars. Is that true? That isn't true. What is true is that Oscar became a big fan as well. So we would essentially just give each other the lowdowns. And when I told him I was a guest judge on this season, he was really excited. And he, in fact, dressed up in drag for his, I can't remember what she's called. His friend is an artist, a performance artist. And he, she put him fully in drag. He looked absolutely amazing for this uh, performance in New York. Yeah, I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere. Um, <laughs> Look, I, yeah. Google, I Google it after this is over. <laughs> so we, so we did not binge watch on set. No, but there were many, many discussions. So, if, so when did you? This goes into the drag part of the interview. Mm, yes, yes, mother. When did you get introduced to drag? And do you remember what your first reaction to drag was? My really, my first introduction to drag was watching Drag Race. I think. Um like properly I think I was aware of it um but like season five I think of Drag Race yeah okay. uh season and then five. I've just been an avid 
<laughs> fan ever since. And I've basically got whoever I could along for the ride. <laughs> but, there, but there were things like, you know, Lacajo Fall and Rocky Horror, all of those things that you don't yeah. think so much in a in a drag way. I don't know what I would have ever called them. Um, yeah, you're a massive theater fan. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Oh. So, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. yeah. <laughs> um, and also, you know, in in uh, with pantomimes here, there's yeah. usually a, a drag performer in the show. Yeah. But I think also, I just love RuPaul's Drag Race. And as we told you, you are our fave. Oh and I must do a shout out to Rich and Tom and Annabeth and Ollie, who were the people that we, we all came to watch you. There's just a little group of us that, I mean, there are so many people I know who love Drag Race, but um, just massive fans. And I do think in a general way, Watching how Rue has touched so many people. Oh, sorry, I don't know where this is going off. Um, <laughs> and wait, if I turn it, no, I don't think I can turn it down. Oh, we don't um, it. Oh, okay. Um, watching how many people's lives have actually been touched by the show and the queens on the show, mm. and watching people talk about like awful, awful times, like whether it be at school, whether it be at home, whether it be families. Mm. Uh, and like the openness and vulnerability of watching people on TV talk about their journeys, oh my god, I find it so moving. Yeah, I, I, want, I wanted to, not to make it about me, but I wanted to know <laughs> what, it was, what it was about me that you and your friends loved because it was. I literally, when I heard you were in the audience in uh, J- January, mm. I literally like kind of shit myself, and then when we met. <laughs> You said, "Oh, I, we were at, we were at the show in July." I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, yeah, I was, I was blown away. A, I was just blown away because I am such a fan. So, I, so I was curious why. <laughs> I think it's your. I, I'm a pretty good judge of character, and obviously, no tea, no shade on your drag class, but me and you did have a discussion about this season. All tea, all shade. Go there now. <laughs> no, but. I, no, um, but I do think I'm a good judge of character, and you just have a real um, brightness. There's just you're just joyful, and actually, I am finding with this season too, the queens seem to be like being for the most part quite nice to each other. Mm-hmm. There was just there's just a joy with you, and don't get me wrong, I loved a lot of the other queens, but there's just something about you, and I think it's also because you can see that all of the stuff you're doing, all your activism and everything is so coming from the right place and you are genuinely trying to connect people and make things better. And it's not, again, it's not an agenda. It's like you are doing it for you in the best way. You just have like a brightness about you. I love you so much. I can't, I can't get tea with you. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's funny because when we did talk, when we were at the Clapham and we talked, we did have a conversation about season 12 and I'm not going to talk about that, but it was interesting to me that with the things that we talked about, you really mm. without any, without any conversation truthfully about what was happening while you were there. Mm. The one small thing we talked about, you really hit on the head and it's, yeah, I, I'm just going to have to forever now <laughs> call you and be like, girl, what do you think of her? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because obviously it's a really strange thing. And I had told, of various people, like, I hadn't obviously gone into detail about who I'd seen when I went on the show because obviously it's revealing. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, and and my friend Richard actually said to me that I had said to you that thing, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, and I and again, I don't think it was like a prophecy or something, but there was no. definitely there was just a feeling. There was just like a strange feeling. Um, yeah, and it's funny because I was so nervous on the show that I didn't say it, but there was also another queen who I told you that I really, really loved, who mm-hmm. I think just has a really beautiful soul. And mm-hmm. I wish I had said it. Um, I didn't. And then I went to say goodbye to them all afterwards, and I did say it to her then. Well, but, see, that, um, that's, yeah. a, that's what matters. And I'll tell you, being in that side of it, when during my season, when someone would say something to us individually, it does mean the world, and it does carry, and it does stay mm. with us. But you know what's really crazy is when they did the uh, lip sync, there was, um, I was imagining radiating love at the stage. And I was just, I was just doing that, thinking it. And afterwards, 
one of the queens was like, I really felt love from you. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> came through it was amazing yeah yeah Yeah. i mean you've seen it now now that you're i mean going from fan of the show to seeing it in person what was your impression of rupaul amazing right (laughs) i had met ru twice before um out of uh, ru is out of drag and i just get really overwhelmed meeting people so i hadn't had my sort of proper conversation i was so floored by like the charisma, uniqueness, and other talent. The like the, the, <laughs> physical, be <laughs> the physical beauty is unfucking believable. Oh, yeah. Towering like with her amazing height plus wig plus shoes. All of that. And then just that presence. But I was also so in love with Michelle and Ross. Oh, and I just God. the whole yeah. thing was so amazing and I do my brain goes to me you're not going to be a judge which is a shit judge I'm really worried I'm a shit judge because I was so nervous every time it came to me and I think that the difference is at home you go oh this person did this this person did that blah 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 mm-hmm. chatting the whole way through and then there oh my god it's awful like you see you are all working so hard and everyone was exhausted mm-hmm. and it's like and in the lip sync, that's what I really found. Because the lip sync was unbelievable. Yeah, and then when they were, sorry, go on. No, I'm sorry, I'm interrupted. Go on. <laughs> oh no! And then when they're waiting for, when they were waiting for the decision, mm-hmm. I my heart was breaking because I was like, you're just there. And when it all comes down to it, if you take everything away, you're just simply trying to show that you have something, show that you want something. What? Oh my god! It was so upsetting. I found that much more upsetting uh, in person. Yeah, it is it is like, and there's no way to explain it without really seeing how it really does happen. Mm. It does feel, uh, while the contestants are there, you really are in a bubble. So you really have mm. no idea what is going on outside in the rest of the world. You are isolated. And this whole competition consumes your entire life. And yeah. every moment of eating, sleeping, and breathing the competition so Mm -hmm. you see them when you judge you're at a critical point of like who is going to like you're you're right there you're right towards the end and you're at a but also what I did find actually the trickiest is having not seen any of the other weeks it is a Mm -hmm. much more um straightforward sort of decision but now Mm -hmm. watching the show there 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 are a couple of queens that I was like huh and then watching the show they're so lovely and so endearing and that bit you don't get. So then it's yeah. sort of like I'm reframing what I thought at the time. Um, is it crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Michelle is like a bona fide huge deal in the UK. What is it about Michelle that you think Brits love and connect to? I think she's just fab. Again, yeah. I think like I think you can just yeah. feel someone's vibe. Like she's yeah. she's just very much herself and also she's done I she said she did like the only way is Essex and she's done like the most hilariously random things but she's also <laughs> really worked for it like Strictly Come Dancing she really worked for it she was on the West End doing eight shows mm-hmm. a week mm-hmm. and I think that like showing how committed one is to an art form in whatever way that is is um encouraging for an audience because you think oh like she's not it's not just she's talking about like she loves musical theatre and then she was in a musical theatre show and smashed it um so I think it's all of those things but also also and I did say this to her she Mm. is so stunning without makeup on Uh, I couldn't believe it gorge gorge oh (laughs) she is is so unbelievably gorge now I know also because you just brought it up can you talk about uh musicals and how how your love of musical theater came into your life because from what I have understood and read Mm. You uh, you fancy yourself a singer, which you are, but then you mm-hmm. also don't love your singing. What's the deal, Daisy? What's the deal? <laughs> so here's the thing. I went to a musical theatre school, sort of accidentally. I was naughty. Uh, my friend went to boarding school. We found a boarding school where I'd be busy. Yada, yada, yada. It was a musical theatre school. Um, <laughs> I, I love singing, but in the school, which I think is a drawback to the school, if you didn't have the big, belty, musical theatre voice, mm-hmm. you were not a singer and that I think is the biggest issue with the school 
there wasn't an encouragement of I don't feel of the sort of as different as such voices. Um, so I've learned to love myself over the years. I've learned well, to love what this verse offers, yeah. You've got love from Barbara Streisand doing <laughs> <laughs> her album. I mean, I feel like that's a stamp of approval. What <laughs> right? was that? I mean, How did that come together? Can you imagine like, no! where I was trundling along in my life? We'd finished filming and it was, oh no, the film had just come out and JJ was like, JJ is the connector of all human people. He was <laughs> like, um, Barbara wants to meet you. So Barbara who? Barbara, <laughs> Barbara fucking Streisand. I honestly thought it was a joke and I thought it was never going to happen. And then I went to her house. Get out of I swear to God, I went to her house. I almost spilt honey on her 18th century carpet, which was mortifying, oh. as you can imagine. Wait, wait, was this while you were having tea by the gristmill? We were, we were having tea. Oh, my it God. It was so fucking yeah. great. And, uh, and we the were talking about Gypsy because she was supposed to do it, and I was going to test for Gypsy. That's um, right. Say again. That's right. She was going to yeah. be I'm just relishing in your story. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the game you're dying over here right now. Uh, um, and then, obviously, all of the other stuff happened, which is a crying shame that she's not doing that. But then she goes, oh, do you want to sing on my album? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then it happened. I was like, what is going on? Oh, my God. It was amazing. And the best thing was, last year, I get an email saying, hi, Barbara would love to invite you to our concert. I was like, she does not fucking remember me. So we go to the concert. It was so amazing. It was in like her box. Oh my God. And then afterwards, everyone was queuing to meet her. It's like the most amazing Disneyland queue ever. It's like, <laughs> imagine just, and when we went to her show in LA, it's like Dustin Hoffman was in the queue. It was so fucking surreal. Anyway, they come and get me and like bring me forward to the front of the queue. No! I was like, what is going on? Wait, you skipped say, in front of Dustin Hoffman who was in Meet no, the No, 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 so Dustin was the last one. So this queue, this queue, which had various like fabulous people from all over, they were like, oh, hey, Daisy, Barbara wants you. I was like, uh, okay. And I, I mainly couldn't believe that she remembered who I was. And she's so fantastic. So fantastic. She's just everything you imagine her to be. Just wonderful, so warm. Oh, and that voice. Oh. It is it is like the honey you spilt on her 18th century <laughs> carpet. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. So smooth. Oh. Do you, do, <laughs> do you find, because you are so, um, you are so uh, outspoken on so many different things that are so important to so many of us. Like, uh, uh, the, um, like the, uh, environment, uh, LGBTQIA plus rights, um, women's rights. Um, do you find a voice like Streisand um, who has been, who is so, um, who's been so fierce for so many of us for so long, do you find her as an inspiration? Do you look at her, like, do you look at her as one of your, uh, I guess, role models? I don't know. I think when, when we went to her show in LA, she was raising money for, I think at that time, the Hillary Clinton campaign. Yeah. And, um, she donated unbelievable amounts of money to separate charities. And then I was driving through LA whenever I was there in December, and there's a whole wing of a hospital called the Streisand Wing, I think. She has done, I I, I think she, a lot of people talk about a lot of things and obviously do amazing things, but she mm -hmm. talks about a lot of things and then puts so much money where her mouth is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable, the reach. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she, she's so smart as well. So everything she's doing, you're like, oh, my God. And, it, yeah, she's amazing. Amazing. I don't know. Like, I know, I know I'm like, I'm, I basically knew you were going to say that. I was just like, Back to musicals, though. What's your favorite musical? What's your favorite musical? <sighs> so. Huh. So today, as I was cleaning up my cupboards, I was listening to Moana and then Mulan. Oh. Okay, so talk to me. Are you like, this is something I don't know about you. Are you like a closeted Disney fanatic like me? Oh, I, no, I love Disney films, yeah. Okay, so I, do, I don't know if I'm as as strong of a fan as you. <laughs> um, because you, you are like, where does your love of Disney come from? I think it's, for me, it was 
the idea that I could continue to dream. And I, if for some reason in my queerness, I found comfort there. I don't know what it mm. was, mm. but it was stories of you're different, but it's okay to be different, which has been kind of the new, that Renaissance Disney storyline, like from Ariel to Belle, mm. you know, especially Belle. I think that Beauty and the Beast was the one that resonated with me the most, I think, because here is this girl who was not she was she was smart she read books she was not after mm-hmm. the negative. she was after she was out for herself and her father and there was something about that that felt uniquely and and specifically queer to me mm-hmm. i don't know what it was but that was also came out at the time when i was like 12 years old and mm-hmm. trying and fi- in figuring out that i was not like other people so mm-hmm. i think that's where it initially came from there was just a lot of comfort there you know yeah but for yeah. you, like, what is it for you? I don't know. I think I just, that was just what we watched growing up. And yeah, I just love them. I mean, for Mulan, I never thought about it at the time in a sort of um, female way again. But now you're like, oh, yeah, she's a fucking female warrior. She's mm-hmm. a hero. And because finding out it's based on truth, you're like, oh, my God, she did this thing. It's so insane. But with Moana, even though it's all there, I just love the music so much. I think it's also that of like combining all these amazing things with amazing songs. And yeah, it's the, like the, artist, the best the thing ever. So if you had to pick a favorite since we're here, what's your favorite Disney movie? <laughs> uh, animated. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. okay, look, now you are serious. You're like, let's break it down. Animated, no, live action, Pixar, <laughs> you're a Renaissance, classic. <laughs> I would say, I would say probably Mulan, yeah. Wow. Yeah, the songs just, the songs just are so fantastic. Oh. Who's that girl I see? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's really nice to their dad. Oh. <laughs> okay, so then I have to ask this question. Favorite ride at Disneyland? Oh, you that's a good question. You referenced it twice in the interview already. Disneyland. So oh, I'm curious. Okay. Q for. Okay. Who, who am I kidding? <laughs> <laughs> um, Space Mountain is a fantastic ride. Same. It's like on a theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it is on theme. Let's think. Does it, I think Disneyland is amazing. Oh, what's the big one? Big Thunder Mountain. The one I love Big Thunder Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. These are like the thrill ride roller coasters. Well, then oh, we yeah, have to, no, I do. We have to get a oh. Disney. Oh, do you know the one I love, which I sort of hate, but I love is the haunt. What's it? The what? The the tower oh, that drops you. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh the tower, tower. Tower of Tower of Terror. Yes. yes. Hate it, but yeah. love it. You, are, I love that ride. <laughs> yeah, and I do think we should go to Disneyland together. We're gonna go. Great. Whenever we- I'm in LA, let's go. But also, the Florida one is really good. The Florida one is almost better because there's like four parks and you can and like so ride. many rides, <laughs> so, many, so rides. many rides, and so much food, which leads yeah. to my next section really quickly. Yeah. Not only are you a gigantic fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, but you also love other reality TV. Yes, like Great British. Great British Bake Off. Now get this: so I have made friends with Michael Chakravarty of Great British Bake Off 2019. And he has some questions for you. Are you ready for oh it? Oh my god, I love him! The okay. glasses. Let me yes, yes, love oh, all the glasses. We love Let him. Me. And he's gay too, isn't he? Yes. And I feel oh. like you're like an honorary gay man. <laughs> oh, lovely. Please go ahead. Okay, okay, let me know if you can hear these, okay? Hi Daisy, it's Michael here. I have so many questions I could ask you, but I'm going to try and limit it to the most important ones. And I feel like you can learn a lot about someone from the following question. Would you rather have fingers for toes or toes for fingers? I feel like there's a correct answer to this one. (laughs) That's his first silly one. Did you hear it? Yeah. Fingers for... So basically, if you get the fingers for toes, are you allowed to keep your fingers as fingers? (laughs) I think so. I mean, okay. you, it's your well, answer. I say fingers for toes. Can you imagine having little stubby toes as fingers? No. <laughs> no, I cannot. They're kind of cute toes, but yeah, fingers okay. just seem better. Now here's yeah, a, yeah. So toes for fingers. 
no, 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 fingers for toes, fingers for toes. You can't, yeah. Once you say it, you can't change it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here are his real questions. We're going into the your your GBB uh, fandom here, so. Okay. Right, now for some baking questions. Uh, number one, if you were a bake, what bake would you be? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'd say, because it's also my favorite, a tiramisu. Although, does that really count? Wait, I think yeah. it can, yeah. Again, well, you're... more a dessert than a cake. But yeah, I'm choosing, so I'll say tiramisu. Tiramisu, okay, how about this? Yeah. An important one for any British person, biscuits to dunk or not to dunk? Oh, interesting. It depends <laughs> on the biscuit. It really does. What's your favorite biscuit? Well, I, I don't, can't have that many biscuits now because I'm a vegan. Oh, that's they, they are doing lots of vegan alternatives. The, my favorite thing that I used to do, and hopefully, Michael, you appreciate this, is a fingers, which I'm sure there must be an American version, used to bite off both ends and suck teeth through it. And it was sort of like a straw. And then the biscuit crumbled inside. It was so amazing. The main thing I miss is Jaffa Cakes. Oh, those! I had those when I was over there. Oh, they're, they're so really, good. Really good. Yeah. Um, how about this one? What is your go-to family favorite bake? Oh, interesting. Isn't this silly? I was like, I have to get somebody from Great British Bake Off to help me with this. <laughs> okay, let's say family. I'd either say scones, and I did make scones yesterday, and they were a bit flat but delicious, or for a sort of a group, please, a lemon drizzle cake. A le okay, you're sending me your recipe for your lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> okay. And then our final question from Michael. Now, here's the most important one. Here's the deal breaker. When you're eating a scone, is it cream first? Oh, my God. Jam first. Nina got this one wrong. Don't make her mistakes. <laughs> da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Brilliant. Okay, so he, here's, I'm, I'm going to make a supposition. I'm going to say that you said cream first and jam second, Nina. Is that true? No, I said jam first. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, so, you know, there's this whole, like, divide, like, Devon Cornwall people say, uh, cream should be dolloped. Uh, yeah. I would say I would say cream first because I think it acts as like a middle sort of smooth layer for the jam to go on top. But I also, and again, I don't know how Michael's going to feel about this because I used to have this with my gran. We used to put and still do butter and marmite on scones as a savory version, and oh, it is right. utterly delicious. But I think a lot of Brits will find that outrageous. That sounds delightful. I now here's the deal. I went when I was over in the UK. I had the marmite, and I would fell so madly in love with it. And then I tweeted about it. And this is the problem with social media. People hated me. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say you got sent like ten pots of marmite. Which no was the best outcome. No, the the Brits that followed me were like, "How could you like marmite?" I'm like, it's no, 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 it must have been the Australians. No. Oh well, they're very Vegemite, aren't they? Yeah, because they think marmite's gross and. I mean, in general, if, if, if people are having a stress about Marmite, that's good, right? <laughs> yeah. you think, if you're not stressing about all the other crazy stuff, good for you. <laughs> no, we have uh, some really silly rapid fire questions we'd love to fire at you if, you were, sure. if you're willing. Okay, go for it, Pat. Okay, what is your go-to karaoke song? Unbreak my heart. Tony Braxton. Really? Is that really true? I'd heard yeah. that. You, or it, Shania Twain. Which one? Dun, da, 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 da. Let's go, girls. Yeah. <laughs> Your favorite musical? <gasps> oh. oh, I'm going to throw a new one in there. It's a new favorite, Hades Town. Oh. It is so good. It's so, so good. good. The scene where he is uh, crawling into uh, Hades Town and he's singing the song "Wait for Me" and the lights are flying everywhere. Oh, uh, it's great! When he turns around, even though you know it's coming, uh, I saw it twice and my heart stopped. I know. Oh. I like, you told me this was going to happen, but I still wasn't ready to accept it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Favorite food? Oh. Um. Oh. Let's say Japanese as a general cuisine. I think, that's, I think that's accurate. It is so, so good. 
So good. Uh, favorite movie to have a cry to? Oh, um, Love Actually. Oh, <laughs> oh. This could be the same answer. Favorite movie to have a laugh? To have a laugh. What did I watch recently that was so funny? Um, oh my God, I can't think of it. Oh, oh, what's that one with Will uh, Farrell and um, the uh, and Mark Wahlberg? Oh, like oh. Uh, Talladega yeah. Nights? No, the, it's called like the odd, the odd. Oh, the Fathers. That one? Yeah, it's like Daddy's Daddy Day. Oh Daddy. no, 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 no! This was that other one. In fact, is it Will Farrell? Oh no, is it The Rock? <laughs> well, this is this is how much of an impact I, I have. Love I don't remember who's in it. We'll go to the um, next one. It's okay, don't worry about it. Okay, let's say Elf. Elf. There we go. Show right now. Wait, say again. Favorite TV show. Oh, favorite TV show. Uh, let's say RuPaul's Drag Race. Yay! Yay! Take that, Great British Big Off. <laughs> <laughs> who's your favorite, other than me, your favorite queen from Drag Race? Okay, let's think. Um, Alaska. She's sickening. She's so sickening. Sickening and hilarious. So funny. So funny. Uh, favorite. Your favorite movie as a kid. Uh, Matilda. Okay, so talk to me about Matilda. What was it about <laughs> Matilda? I just loved Matilda so much. I think everybody wants to have special powers, don't they? Yes. And then I found out that one of our cameramen, Phil from episode seven, worked on Matilda. Oh my God. You lost your mind? Lost my mind. And they're just like the whole throwing out the window. I think it was the first time that I had seen sort of special effects in that way. I was mm -hmm. just like, no, there's someone flying through the air, having no concept of how it was done. I just fully believed it was happening. Oh, <laughs> I just think it's brilliant. I think we're, I think we're gonna need to redo Matilda and you could, you could be like um, a grown up Matilda. <laughs> with, like, with, like, I wonder where Matilda went. Imagine if she massively went off the rails. Her powers were too much to deal with. <laughs> it's a really dramatic, it's, dark it's, it's, <laughs> with Matilda, too. The coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, just a few more. Favorite color? Uh, teal, turquoisey. Ooh, Excellent. That's great. Favorite Pretty. season of the year? Ooh. I'd say, so I have terrible allergies. So even though I love spring, it usually forces me into great sadness. But I think with all the Wim Hof breathing, I'm getting over my hay fever. So I'm going to say spring. That's fabulous. All right, you're getting all mm. these. This is, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> what is the best advice you've ever been given? Oh. I can't really remember who gave me it or if someone sort of gave me it in a in a, a different way. But it's sort of that you're the only person that can be experiencing it. I mean, it's so obvious, but you're the only person that could be experiencing your stuff. So you right. may as well enjoy it because if you're not, no one else is going to be able to. So mm -hmm. as, as you say that and uh, as we wrap this up, we're just – what are what is next for Daisy? What are you working on now in the midst of in the midst of this while the world has stopped? Like, what are you hopeful for? What are the projects you have coming up that you're hopeful for after this is all hopefully over? Well, it's actually I've been sent loads of really amazing like books and scripts. So actually, well, hopefully when everything gets sort of back on the road, I hopefully will be doing something cool. Everything's sort of like not quite there yet um mm -hmm. it's nice to just feel like creatively things are coming together but I mainly I I can't like I talk to my agent all the time Hilda she's unbelievable but I was supposed to be going to LA in like two weeks and it's and we were talking about physical contact and how much we hug and mm -hmm. right now I just can't wait to like hug people yes and be like and be like in with people instead of over uh the internet that's m mainly what I can't wait for yeah, I, you and I are so similar. <laughs> because when, I, when we met, I was just like, I just want to hug her. Am I allowed to hug you? Like, it's like, I like, you know, I, I'm a very tactile person, and I, mm. and I ha I'm like ready for the world to get back to normal, so when I can start oh. hugging friends again, and yeah, um, you know, make it all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Before we go, um, and before um, 
we we say goodbye to you. We always end our podcast with good vibes and things that make us feel good or things that um, advice to other people that they can maybe put into practice or even just watch this TV show. It's helping me keep my mind off of this. What would be your good vibe right now? Have you seen Toggy King? <laughs> no! I've watched two episodes. Episode one lulled me into a false sense of security. I was not ready. <laughs> I was not ready for all the twists and turns. So yeah. it's, and it's it, it's weird because I did see, so there's this whole thing, Nina, you should watch it. There's this whole thing with God. Carol Baskin, who is this woman who has been accused of essentially murdering her husband. And her new husband, I watched this awful video yesterday where he was saying that they were like tricked into stuff and whatever it was. And it honestly like broke my heart because it's just this guy like protecting his wife. So there's a lot around it that's, difficult um again i think with the social media thing because if we all just watched it and didn't share our thoughts mm -hmm. i think it's one thing but they're receiving comments about stuff that obviously they put to bed whatever it is whatever you think about carol Baskin. um so aside from the sort of general controversy it's a really really well made show because every time you think you're at the core of what the show is no no <laughs> Yeah. I've I'm, I'm only through two episodes and I've already been handed a couple of big twists. <laughs> oh. oh, and they continue. And there's one thing that is heart, like honestly, actually heartbreaking. You can't actually believe what you're watching. And it is very upsetting because you do think the judicial system in America it is like it is scary, um, sort of what ends up happening and the comments that people are making that aren't taken into consideration and all that sort of stuff. So if you don't go too deep uh into the into the bat. Um, it's great. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm watching it and then I'm going to be emailing you my thoughts immediately. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so, as in I like smash through it. And um, what are my other general thoughts? I mean, what I'm hoping is um, that for all of the people that are okay for this, obviously there is so much awfulness. Uh, what I'm hoping is everything starts going down, everyone starts getting better, or it starts at least, you know stopping being as terrible as it is and all of the people that are safe at home what i'm hoping and it might be you know a pipe dream is that people are like sleeping well because they don't have to go into offices and all of that sort of stuff that people are doing odd jobs around the house that they wouldn't do otherwise that people are like connecting with their family that people are messaging writing letters whatever it is to people they maybe haven't spoken to in a while and have sort of had a push to now like get in touch with again um and I'm hoping that when this is all done, everyone is, I don't know, like that grateful feeling that people have after they've been ill in general. You know, when you've had a cold and you're like, then you get over it and you're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping that, I, I just hope that everyone's a bit, like comes out of this feeling grateful and happy and, you know, kindness and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, kindness is, I really, that's my hope too. I really just hope kindness finds its way back into the conversation. And yeah. I think, especially with platforms of social media, that people really start to exercise kindness. That's, again, you know, we, we people used to be so kind, so. Yeah, and I do think, and there's this, you know, for people that believe in astrology and things, everybody said 2020 was gonna be a crazy year anyway. Um, but I think with, with, with all of this, hopefully it's reframing what people think are important and, and essentially when you don't have the energy except to do the positive things and think about what it is that actually makes you happy and maybe like cut relationships, whatever, that aren't really making you happy, that you don't have the energy to maintain. I just feel like hopefully it will be, aside from all the devastation, obviously, um, is that we will come out feeling rebirthed or something, you know? You are, um, you're just remarkable. And Again, I know I said it a million times <laughs> repeatedly when we met in person, <laughs> but I just adore you so majorly. I and do wish I knew because I would have brought you to everything. <laughs> I wish I knew you were into Star Wars. Because honestly, when I was doing my premiere list in LA, I was like, God, who, who, who else can I? <laughs> no, I, I would have had you there. I oh. want to, I'm taking, like, what I want is a friend. I'm taking you to Disney. Oh. 
you know, oh, right no, absolutely but i yeah. wish it had started then but then again i do feel that the universe is an amazing thing and when that that man was walking towards me in the clapping ground and i was like who is this person and he's like nina wants to meet you i was like what oh. <laughs> and the most amazing thing is i made the group of friends that i was with also so happy because they were able to share in that like it that was amazing that was to me that that said so much because i was like I, again, really, in that moment, I had no idea until like moments before that you were there. And I said, oh, do you think she'd want to say hello? And then like, it was like minutes later, you were standing right there. And I was like, what's happening? And then I got to meet all these beautiful people who are, who are obviously your, your rock and your support and your love. And you felt that. And these people were so tremendously kind and so warm and so wonderful. And you just... That is a reflection of you. And I, do you know what I mean? You're just an, I just am in love with you. <laughs> I also, we have those pictures. So Tom, who was one of the party, got all those pictures framed. So we all have a framed picture in our houses. <laughs> I'm going to need Tom to send one. me one because the ones that I have, we all have crazy eyes. <laughs> so, oh, really? Yes. Oh, it was so great. We have crazy, like, glowing night eyes i don't know what they are but we look nuts so tom's gonna have to get on the horn and send me but daisy thank you for the world thank you for this thank you for changing so many lives um just by being so bravely and boldly you and allowing us to even share in that for this hour um i love you very much thank Thank you so so much guys no, oh, thank you. No, <laughs> no you can't. I, the I, privilege I, is entirely really, ours. <laughs> we're so very sure. excited. Yeah. If, um, and I would say uh, follow Daisy on social media, but please don't actually go <laughs> and please go and uh, get a good book and, and Daisy's name. Yes, and, and stay book. safe and in your houses. And staying safe and stay in your houses. Daisy Ridley, you are a joy, and I cannot wait to be the trunch bowl to your Matilda. And to oh take my God, home. that was the amazing. <laughs> Yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> I love you very much. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Bye, days. Thank you so much for listening to Dragcast episode 183 with our very special guest and friend, Daisy Ridley. You can catch more fun of Dragcast on Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever fine podcasts are heard. Thank you for tuning in. And make sure you're ready for our next episode next week featuring Jared Harris and Allegra Reggio.